Okay, now when it comes to dissolving substances in water, we will spend more in-depth time on this in the future, but for right now, I just want to make sure we have an understanding of what's going on and maybe how to depict this in a picture format. So, there we see our uh, Mickey Mouse looking symbol for water. We've got two hydrogens attached to one oxygen. Now, what type of molecule is water? If you remember, this is a polar molecule. And what that means is that because oxygen is more electronegative, it pulls electrons over to its side of the molecule away from hydrogen. And so if you looked at a diagram or a scan, a picture of the electron density, the electron cloud around the water molecule, there'd be more electron density around oxygen than hydrogen. So we end up having a partial positive. This is supposed to be the lowercase delta symbol. So we have a partial positive side of the water molecule where the hydrogens are and we end up having a partial negative side of the molecule of where the oxygens are. And that's extremely important when talking about dissolving things in water. Now we've already mentioned that not everything dissolves very well in water. Strong acids, strong bases, they completely ionize, meaning they totally separate in when they're put into water. Strong electrolytes do this. Weak acids, weak bases, weak electrolytes do not. Okay, so right now we're just going to focus on strong electrolytes, things that are completely soluble in water. For example, sodium carbonate. How do we know for a fact that sodium carbonate is soluble in water? Because all sodium compounds are. Remember, AP wants us to know that sodium, potassium, ammonium, and nitrate compounds are always soluble. So when we drop this sodium carbonate in water, this is what it ends up looking like in a completely blown up fashion. So yes, we see we have two sodium ions and a carbonate ion dispersed amongst, amongst the water molecules. But do pay attention to the alignment of the water molecules. We have the partial negative oxygen ends of the water molecules surrounding the sodium ions. We have the ears of Mickey Mouse, the partial positive hydrogens, surrounding the negative carbonate ions. And that's what happens. At during this hydrolysis process, the water molecules surround the ions. Now, we'll also notice the sodium ions are smaller than the carbonate ions. Okay, and that makes sense. We've got a single monatomic sodium plus one ion versus carbonate, a carbon and three oxygens with extra electrons around it. And that's going to play a part when we talk more about dissolving. Okay, the water molecules want to surround and pull apart these ions. So what's holding the ions together is what's called a lattice energy. And the water trying to pull the ions apart is called the energy of hydration. If the ions are too big, then the water molecules can't really do a good job surrounding them and pulling them apart, which is why your solubility rules say most carbonates and most phosphates are insoluble. All right. Sodium carbonate and potassium carbonate are because the sodium and potassium are so teeny tiny, water can still do its job. So, as again, we'll talk about this further, but you know, when the energy holding the ions together, the lattice energy is stronger than the energy of hydration to pull them apart, then things don't dissolve well in water. And then, if the energy of hydration is greater, well, then you can easily pull things apart. So why am I mentioning this here right now? Because I want us to be able to be really sure that we understand about ion concentration. So if we took 26.5 grams of this sodium carbonate and dissolved it in a liter of water, what is the molarity of the solution? I know technically dissolved to make one liter of solution. That was the intention of this question. But this is a very typical um, AP style multiple choice question because it involves math but ultimately not very complicated math and since we can't use our calculator on the multiple choice part this is a good contender so they were very nice to give us one liter of water one liter of solution so whatever moles of sodium carbonate we get that's also going to be our molarity and then if you notice we have point 
or sorry, 26.5 grams of sodium carbonate, they give us the molar mass. And if you have that keen mathematical eye, you'll notice that 26.5 is one fourth of 106. So it's a quarter of a mole, 0.25 mole. And again, we get to divide that by one liter. So the molarity of the solution is 0.25 molar. So the next question there says, though, what is the concentration of the carbonate ion? If you haven't seen that before or yet, the brackets stand for concentration. So what is the concentration of the carbonate ion? AKA, what's the molarity of the carbonate ion? Well, if we look back at our pretty picture, let me bring it back up, we see that every time a formula unit of sodium carbonate goes in the water, we get two sodium ions and one carbonate ion. So if we put one mole of sodium carbonate in, we get one mole of carbonate ions. It's a one-to-one -one ratio in that formula. And so because of that, again, we have 0.25 molar overall concentration. So the concentration of the carbonate ion is 0.25 molar. But for the sodium, every time we put sodium carbonate in, we get two sodium ions. So our concentration of the sodium ion is 0.5 molar. I know it's a little hard to think about sometimes, but again, we're talking the pieces parts. The formula of sodium carbonate is two parts sodium, one part carbonate. So for one mole of sodium carbonate, we get two moles of sodium ions. So yes, the concentration of the sodium ion is greater than the overall solution concentration in number, but again, it all make, works itself off, works itself out in the end because we're talking about the particles within the formula. All right, I hope I didn't make that too complicated for you. But where we could see this is this nice sample question that I'll end with. It says, okay, we have a 0.3 mole sample of calcium bromide and a 0.15 mole sample of sodium bromide. And we're going to dissolve those in water and dilute it to 1,500 milliliters. What is the concentration of bromide in the solution? Okay, so do notice that it's asking us for the concentration of the bromide ion in the solution. If it was asking for regular concentration, I would have 0.3 moles plus 0.15 moles, that would be 0.45 moles of solute. I would divide that by 1.5 liters, and my answer would be 0 0.30 molar. But that's not the case. Remember what we just talked about. In my 0.3 mole sample of calcium bromide, there's two bromide ions. So there is actually 0.6 moles of bromide ions coming from that sample. Sodium bromide, one bromide, so I'm still getting the same amount of moles, 0.15 moles. So as far as the concentration of bromide, it's 0.75 moles of bromide that are going into this solution, divided by my 1.5 liters, and that's why my answer, I'm going to choose the 0.5 molar. There are other ways that you can do this. I could find the concentration of the calcium bromide solution and the concentration of the sodium bromide and add it together. So there are multiple ways. I just thought this tied in nicely to what we just talked about and that's why I chose this path to solving this problem. Alright, hope that helps. See you soon.